When you begin to design and plan for your backup implementation, one of the questions that will inevitably come up is how much space do you need? The answer to this question involves several moving pieces, such as what's your retention requirement? What's the typical change rate? Source data size? Frequency of job run? And so on. Luckily, Veeam has built in two capabilities to help with data efficiency in the form of compression and data deduplication. On top of that, to satisfy any security requirements, we've also built in AES-256 end-to-end encryption. Let's have a look inside the software at exactly where you configure these settings and what options you have available. Okay, now that we're in the software, let's take a quick look at exactly where to modify the compression and deduplication settings, as well as how to enable encryption. So if we edit a job that we have and we navigate down to the Storage tab, Notice towards the bottom right hand corner of this job wizard, you're going to see an advanced button. So click on advanced and the next window that pops up, if you'll navigate over to the storage tab, this is where you're going to make changes to compression, deduplication, and enable or disable encryption. Now, if we start at the top under data reduction, this is going to show you a couple options that you can turn on or off, such as completely disabling deduplication if you wanted, excluding both SWAT files as well as deleted blocks. Now, this can be very beneficial in NTFS file system types where if someone deleted a folder that let's say had terabytes of data, those blocks are simply marked for deletion, but at the hypervisor level, they actually haven't been zeroed out yet. So keep in mind that if you leave that turned on, which is the recommended action, Veeam now can recognize that those blocks have been marked for deletion and exclude those from the resulting backup, potentially saving you quite a bit of space. Now, if we navigate down to the compression level, there are several different options here, including disabled altogether or none. Dedupe friendly is generally preferred if you are going to a deduplication appliance. Optimal is going to be the generally accepted recommended option for non-deduplication storage targets. And then you also have high and extreme. Now, high and extreme definitely have a use case if you're trying to reduce the resulting size as much as possible, but keep in mind that extreme comes with quite a big penalty from a CPU standpoint to achieve just a little bit more compression than high. And you can read those potential impacts inside the user guide. Now, if we move down to storage optimization, this is the one I want to make sure we clarify because the way that you look at this, you're optimizing this particular job based on the storage target. But what you're really doing under the hood is modifying the block size at which we're doing deduplication against. So for an example, when you look at local target, it even says large blocks in parentheses because this is generally used for 16 terabyte and beyond resulting backup file sizes. And this is going to be using a four megabyte block size to do a comparison against. If you move down the list, local target drops that block size to one meg, LAN uses a 512K, and then WAN goes all the way down to 256K. Now here's the thing. What if you're trying to back up to a local target on site, but you're trying to get the smallest resulting backup file size available? You would actually select the WAN target, even though there's no WAN involved in this quick scenario we talk about, because we're now going to be deduping with the smallest possible block size, which will take longer for the job to run, but will generally yield a smaller resulting backup file size because we were able to locate more duplicates using that smaller block size, okay? Now lastly with encryption. Encryption is something you can enable or disable per job. And one of the things that I wanna point out is notice when we enable it and we select a password and try to hit okay, Veeam is actually going to tell us that the next job run must be an active full because we've now enabled encryption. Now, if you're creating a brand new job and you turn this on from the beginning, it will naturally be encrypted. But if you go modify an existing job, just remember that you will have to run an active full once encryption is turned on. Now, one of the other things that's very important to remember is when you go and set up your configuration backup, which is very important to keep an eye on, 
and you access this under the options menu, configuration backup, and notice right here in the mid section is enable backup file encryption. If you have enabled encryption on any backup job, but you do not enable encryption on your actual configuration backup job, it simply will not run. So it's very important to turn on encryption for your configuration backup job if you plan on using encryption anywhere else in the software. Otherwise, you may be at risk with the configuration backup not running because you enabled encryption other places in the software. Okay, so just remember that if you do want to leverage encryption throughout Veeam, make sure that you do not forget to turn that checkbox on inside the configuration backup. Thanks so much for watching the video and enjoy the rest of your day.